Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform, please give me a five star rating. A quick word from our sponsor, and that is Link2, which makes private equity investment easy. Link2 is democratizing the process, allowing individual accredited investors to be able to access and invest in uh, crypto companies and tech companies. Some of the crypto companies they have in their portfolio include Ripple, BitPay, Dapper Labs, Uphold, Abra, and many more. And they continue to expand their portfolio. So this is certainly a great opportunity. A lot of the institutional investors, the whales and so forth, they hold the tokens like many of you do already, and they're investing in the companies building the infrastructure of the market. So you have this opportunity as well, my friends, and uh, you can essentially double dip if you want to call it that. Hold the tokens and also get equity into companies pre-IPO. So uh, Link2 was uh, certainly one of the participants in Coinbase's equity raise, and the users on the platform at that time also invested, and they did very well with, with Coinbase going public. So there will be many more crypto companies going public, so certainly an opportunity. And right now, with all markets down, valuations are down. So uh, certainly the opportunity to get these shares um, at a lower price is here. So if you would like to learn more about Link2, please check out the link in the description. Now, guys, uh, I tweeted out about this. I also posted it on YouTube. Uh, my interview with Jack McDonald, CEO of PolySign and Standard Custody, will be published in the morning. You don't want to miss this. We talk about institutional demand for crypto, their recent $53 million uh, funding round, and much more. It's a great interview. You want to check it out. This is my second interview with Jack. So make sure you have the notification bell enabled. Now, I want to share the following macro chart from this analyst here who tweeted it out, essentially showing that Bitcoin has hit the bottom. You know, uh, one thing to take note of, I was surprised that Bitcoin did not, you know, tank to like twelve to $14,000 after the Celsius bankruptcy news. So Bitcoin and the crypto market has endured the Terra Luna collapse, Voyager's bankruptcy, Celsius bankruptcy, the whole three arrows capital debacle, um, even BlockFi getting bailed out, you know, those are all catalysts that could have driven the price further down. So based on this chart, it looks like we've hit the bottom. We'll probably be here for another month or two or three and then start moving upwards, maybe some sort of relief rally in, in, the, in the works. And then, you know, we'll come back down and uh, slowly move sideways. There'll probably be little relief rallies along the way. And, you know, we'll probably see new all-time highs till the next halving. So just be mentally prepared for that. Uh, this is my second go around. So uh, I'm ready. I'm DCAing. I'm buying. I can't say that, you know, the current price of Bitcoin, which is just over $20,000, is indeed the bottom. But it, there's certainly a probability of it. And I'm looking at it as a buy zone. I don't know what the exact number of the bottom will be, but I'm buying in the low zone. Buy the lows sell the highs. And when you buy the lows, you got to be patient, my friends. It's not, you're probably not going to see a return maybe until a year later, right? With some sort of relief rally. And, and if you're even more patient, as I've personally done in waiting through the 2018, 2019 bull, uh, bear markets, um, I held through that, I bought through that, and I made money in the 2020, 21 uh, bull run. So, that's how people have made money in the past bull runs, right? The ones who made a lot of money in 2017, I was still early to the game, but patience is such a key, guys. So I'm buying and, uh, you know, this is not financial or investment advice. You have to do your own research. I'm just sharing what I'm doing. So interesting chart showing, uh, I think, a very realistic outlook for the market. So uh, take it for what it is. Now, guys, let's jump into some news here. Um, and specifically XRP. Jed McKayla, of course, one of the founders of Ripple, man has been selling billions of XRP, uh, billions of, yeah, yeah, it, it, like near 5 billion, I think he's been selling over the years. And finally, his taco stand wallet has been depleted <laughs> and uh, he's finished selling. So this is interesting news. You know, I don't know what impact this is going to have on the price. But uh, certainly bullish news because you don't have someone who's constantly selling, constantly dumping. Um, and look, it's his right, right? He had the XRP and it's finally over. So the good thing, I think, though, 
uh, is this is one of those bearish catalyst items that you can scratch off the list here, right? It's no longer a threat and it's no longer going to drive selling pressure because uh, it's, it's, you know, a lot of investing and, and the news out there is psychological. People hear, oh, the Jeb McCaleb just dumped 50 million XRP yesterday, right? It's not a, it's not something that makes you feel bullish. It's more bearish. So from a market psychology standpoint, I think this is really good. And uh, end of an era here, if you want to call it that. Now, Rosalind Layton of, um, of Forbes, she continues to document and write about the SEC Ripple lawsuit and also overall crypto regulations. You know, I've covered the SEC lawsuit on this channel a lot because it it has, uh, I mean, just huge implications for the entire crypto market. I hold XRP, Ethereum, Cardano, Chainlink, and many other tokens, Algorand, and so forth. A lot of those tokens are awaiting, and those projects are waiting for clarity. But we know the SEC is looking to do regulation by enforcement, looking to go around and shake down crypto companies. So her recent article, uh, just from a couple of days ago, uh, is really great, and she covers what uh, the uh, SEC took a loss, which we covered this week about uh, the judge saying, "Hey, the SEC and its attorneys, you cannot." Uh, you know, hide the Hinman emails and, and have it both ways with the, uh, the, the Hinman speech and so forth. Uh, so this is great to see the coverage continues. And the headline of the article here is SEC slapdown is a wake up call to Congress. And this is what we've been hammering home on this channel, my friends. It will take Congress to move to pass crypto regulations. And it's great to see that the, once again, the coverage is happening and, and she obviously highlights all the things Ripple is doing, what's happening with the lawsuit and so forth. Uh, so this is certainly great to see. So obviously, I'm not going to read through the whole thing. You guys can go read it for yourself. But it's great to see that in that title, calling out Congress, because they're the ones that have to uh, act here. Now, this past week, Gary Genser, he went on Yahoo Finance and he was interviewed. Now, is there some sort of capitulation happening here with Gary Genser? Because let me play the clip for you. Notice how he grouped securities versus crypto. Let me play it for you. The public benefits by knowing full and fair disclosure and that somebody's not lying to them. You know, basic protections. And whether you're buying a crypto token or you're buying a security such as equities or a security such as an asset-backed security, those basic disclosures, because we in America let investors take risk. You get to decide what risk you want to take, but the person raising the money and selling you those uh, financial assets ought to not defraud you, ought to give you the information so you can make your decisions. But the public is not protected largely because of the non-compliance in this space. Now, guys, notice how he categorized, you know, he mentioned three items. He mentioned like securities and equities and so forth, but he grouped crypto assets separately. He didn't say securities, including equities, crypto, right? He didn't group uh, under the umbrella of securities, crypto. So I think that is very interesting, my friends, is the pressure mounting where he, he needs to now uh, back off a bit, right? In his aggressive stance, especially with the recent slap down that they just, the SEC just got in the Ripple lawsuit. And it's looking like Ripple is going to walk away with, with this in a, with a victory. So very interesting statements. And I'm, I was, when I saw this, I was like, wait, I, I got to listen to that again, because clearly he did not group crypto under securities. He kept it in a separate bucket. He said crypto assets, and he went to securities, uh, which includes equities, right? He could have said securities, which includes crypto assets, equities, and so forth. So I hope you guys get what I'm saying there. And you can certainly go watch the full interview on Yahoo Finance. But um, uh, this is very interesting. And it wouldn't surprise me if Gary Genser is pumping the brakes a bit because it's not, it's, it's a, there's a bit of uh, politics in this. Look, the Democrats look like they're going to lose the midterm elections. What does that mean? More Republicans coming into power. And we've seen a lot of them who oversee the financial committee, which oversees the SEC, 
have been sending letters, have been calling him out on Twitter. Uh, so he's going to start feeling the pressure even more. So uh, you got this SEC lawsuit, uh, excuse me, you got the Ripple lawsuit, which looks like Ripple is going to win. You got Grayscale suing the SEC over uh, not proving a Bitcoin spot ETF. So the crypto industry is going on the offense. So Genser is feeling the, the pressure here and you got members of Congress which are going after him. And then the library case has been a pretty public one as well. And they've, oh my goodness, they, they've publicly destroyed the SEC. I mean, some of the comments and things they've said about how the SEC has been acting shady and so forth. You know, they got a summary judgment coming up uh, this coming week in July 20th. So we'll see what comes out of that. But the SEC, I, I don't think they're in a great spot right now. And Gary Gensler might, might be feeling the pressure here, guys. So uh, that's a very interesting takeaway. We'll have to watch it closely with Gary Genser and uh, how he continues to uh, speak to the public about crypto and how he's, you know, he's, he's going to uh, uh, start, if he's going to change his lingo and his aggressiveness. So let's see what happens. But that's the news, my friends. Uh, don't forget my interview with Jack McDonald coming tomorrow morning. Definitely check it out. Uh, you don't want to miss this one. And I'll talk to you all later. Later.